Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the Solar Impulse 2 starts across the United States. Is SpaceX headed for the Red Planet? FAA has issued 5,000 commercial drone exemptions. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom, it's May 3rd, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. At the time we put this report together, the Solar Impulse 2 had said goodbye to Silicon Valley and was headed for Phoenix, Arizona. By the time you view our report, the aircraft is probably safe on the ground at the Phoenix Goodyear Airport and the crew is planning for the next leg of their flight as they cross the United States headed for New York. Piloted once again by Andre Borschberg, the Solar Impulse 2 continues its epic flight around the world that began March 2015 at an average cruise speed of about 40 miles per hour, not considering headwinds or tailwinds. The flight of the Solar Impulse 2 by pilots Borsberg and Bertrand Picard is a true odyssey. The planned flight time for this leg of the flight was about 16 and a half hours. While its ultimate destination in the United States is New York, two more stops are scheduled, but these locations have not yet been identified. According to a statement, the plan is to reach New York as soon as possible. From there, the crossing of the North Atlantic will begin as the flight heads towards its starting point in Abu Dhabi. SpaceX has said its Red Dragon spacecraft, combined with the Falcon Heavy rocket, can make it to Mars and beyond. According to nasaspaceflight.com, which is not a NASA website, SpaceX has entered into an agreement with NASA for a Mars mission. It's reported the spacecraft, known as the Red Dragon, is a variation of the SpaceX's Dragon 2 spacecraft. The report quoted SpaceX's Elon Musk saying, Dragon 2 is capable of transporting scientific payloads to anywhere in the solar system with a liquid or solid surface with or without an atmosphere. So Dragon is really a crew transport and science delivery platform. The report quoted NASA's Deputy Administrator Deva Newman as saying, we're particularly excited about an upcoming SpaceX project that would build upon a current no exchange of funds agreement we have with the company. In exchange for Martian entry, descent, and landing data from SpaceX, NASA will offer technical support for the firm's plan to attempt to land an uncrewed Dragon 2 spacecraft on Mars. After the break, drone exemptions may decrease as regulations come closer. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. It's been reported that the FAA has approved more than 5,000 Section 333 petition grants for the operation of non-recreational unmanned aerial systems. This is significantly up from approximately 50 approved exemptions this time last year. Gowdy Brothers Aerospace LLC, which is a consulting firm for UAS operators, said there have been improvements in the application and approval process. They pointed out that Section 333 process for commercial UAS operations was never intended to be a long-term solution, only a stopgap, while the FAA gathers information and decides how to fully and safely integrate these unmanned aircraft into the national airspace system. As the FAA gets closer to publishing FAR Part 107, which will be regulations governing the operation of non-recreational UAS operators, the firm expects the volume of applications to decrease. 
They say the new regulations will probably remove the requirement for operators to be certificated pilots and receive that requirement with some sort of training and testing program. Eventually, the Section 333 Certificates of Waiver Authority will be usurped by the federal regulations. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. Our first event is already underway and continues through Thursday of this week. It's the AUVSI Exponential going on at the Ernest N. Morial Convention Center in New Orleans. This convention features just about everything in the area of robotics, which of course includes unmanned aircraft. Exponential covers commercial and military robotic applications, and the convention presents technologies that are on the cusp of the latest news and trends in a dynamic industry. ANN is there right now. Halfway around the world, the Marine Corps Air Station in Iwakuni, Japan, is holding its Iwakuni Friendship Day 2016 Air Show on May 5th. The annual U.S.-Japan Friendship Day is marking its 40th anniversary and will combine both the Fleet Air Wing 31 Annual Base Festival and the traditional Iwakuni Friendship Day in one exciting, fun-filled event that will include both static displays and aerial performances. If you're looking for sun and excitement, May 7th and 8th will bring both at the Fort Lauderdale Air Show being held in Cocoa Beach, Florida. It's a major event that will feature what they say is the best lineup in North America in 2016. And it's headlined by the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds and Canadian Air Force Snowbirds. There'll be numerous other exciting demonstrations and you will see them all while sitting on the beach. May 7th also brings the Manassas Open House and Air Show being held at the Manassas Regional Airport in Virginia. Many of the finest local aerobatic performers are coming to the annual air show and open house at Manassas. You'll see some of the top aerobatic pilots and teams. Everyone with the Manassas Air Show is passionate about aviation and air show entertainment. They say their goal is to inspire future aviators of tomorrow with safe, top quality, family friendly entertainment. And it's free! After these messages, EAA is looking for innovators. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. Now Bree is going to take us around the patch. Thanks, Christopher. Air Ventures Aviation Gateway Park combines technology, innovation, and education, and will be bigger and better than ever this year. However, EAA tells us that there is still some room to display more innovations. Contact the EAA Air Venture Business Office for details. Unmanned aircraft can be used for many useful purposes. However, at this time, there is no established infrastructure to provide traffic control for multiple drone operations. NASA is now researching prototype technologies for a UAS traffic management system that could develop into airspace integration. The Allenson, Michigan Superintendent of Schools has established an aviation program for high school students with classes to be taught at Pelston Regional Airport. The program has ties to Northwestern Michigan College for students to receive college credits. 
ASA says their R-22 helicopter flashcard app is a must-have for anyone learning to fly in the Robinson R-22 model. Nearly 400 flashcards are based on sections 1 through 8 of the R-22 pilot's operating handbook and include special emphasis on the R-22 systems. Arca Space Corporation has started the production of the Arca board, which the company claims is the world's first commercially available hoverboard. It flies at a max height of 20 inches at 12 miles per hour. It goes 6 minutes on a battery charge. That's the trip around the patch. Back to you, Christopher. Thanks, Bree. Textron Unmanned Systems has announced the successful demonstration of the Arison Small Unmanned Aircraft System enabled with hybrid Quadrator technology. This allows a fixed-wing aircraft, which usually requires a launch and recovery system to take off and land vertically, to significantly increase mission flexibility. With assistance from Latitude Engineering and Cloud Gap Technology, the Textron System's proof of concept work combines the vertical takeoff and landing capabilities of a multi rotor platform with the efficiency, speed, and endurance of the Aerosan SUAS fixed wing aircraft. Textron's David Phillips said, in part, now with the potential to add VTOL capabilities, the mission possibilities are almost endless. The system could be launched from the smallest operational areas, adding an array of applications both on land and at sea. Textron defines the Aerosan system as a multi-mission capable UAS that offers the ability to simultaneously support electro-optical infrared full motion video, communications relay, automatic identification systems, and intelligence payloads within a single flight. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.